Photo Story 3 is probably the easiest and fastest video making program that I've used. It uses pictures to create a movie and this is a free download. So if I'm ever at a computer that doesn't have Photo Story on it, I will Google Photo Story or Photo Story 3 and then I will go to this Microsoft download page. You'll first be asked to validate your copy of Windows. And even though down here in the system operating requirements you can see that it's designed for Windows XP and Vista, it does work also on Windows 7. Once you have Photo Story installed after you've downloaded that program, it will be on your computer accessible through the Start button. So Start, All Programs, this is how you find Photo Story if you're at school. And you'll be looking for Photo Story 3 for Windows. This is the default landing page where you will start your photo stories. This is where you want to be if you're going to start a new story. If you're ever trying to open an existing photo story, you'll actually just click on that file. If your file doesn't open, then watch my other demo video on how to work around that little glitch. So photo story is a game of next and back. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first next and see what I'm asked to do. Step one asks me to import and arrange my pictures. So I'm going to go to the import pictures button. And I will browse to the area on my computer where, where my pictures are found. So I will navigate to the area on my computer where I have collected the photos that I want to use for this photo story. Now these I have collected and saved ahead of time and I did put them all inside one folder. I did not put them in a Word document, I actually saved them to my computer that I am working on or the flash drive that I will be using. I can, to insert a picture I can simply click on the picture and select it and hit OK. You can see that that one picture comes in. One of the reasons that I put them all in one folder is so I can streamline this step, which is very handy if I'm working with several pictures. So if I have them all in a folder, I can hit Control A on my keyboard to select all of the pictures and then click the OK button and all of them will import in one step as opposed to doing this repeatedly. You can see all of my pictures are thrown onto the timeline in Photo Story and my next step before progressing is to arrange them in the order that I want. Then down here I can see I have imported this picture twice. Sometimes I do want a picture in twice to revisit it, but if not, I will click on the picture and go over to the right and hit the delete X to get rid of it. So this would be a good collection of photos to use for a photo story about Mount Everest. Now I think it would make more sense to start my photo story with a map of the region and then perhaps zoom in on the mountain itself. And you can see how just by dragging these pictures around on the timeline, I can create the order that I want my pictures to show in. So once I am happy with the order of my photos, then I'll go ahead and progress to the next step. You can see at this step that some of my pictures have some black borders around them. I am given an option to remove the black borders. But it does involve quite a bit of cropping. So in order to get rid of the black border on either side of this map, I will need to crop to something that fits this perspective or this configuration. I'm getting the original over here and the after over here and the after looks great so I'm going to go ahead and click yes I would like to apply this. Now the next picture will come up and in order to get rid of the black borders on this one this is kind of what cropping is going to need to take place and I can fiddle with this a little bit if I want to and get it so that the area, I'm not losing too much of the area, but if I feel like I am, then I will simply not crop this one. I will just skip it or I will resize this so that I am not losing any of the original picture. Once I'm finished removing the black borders from my pictures and I'm satisfied with the order, then I'll go ahead and click the next button. Now again, it's a game of next and back. I could go back if I wanted to immediately and import some more pictures if I had forgotten something. But I'll go ahead and click next and the next item I'm prompted to do is add titles to my pictures. Now I'm going to be narrating over this photo story so titles are probably not necessary at all with the exception of one item, maybe the intro and ending slide. So I might choose one of my pictures to rearrange to the front to be my introductory slide or I could simply use Google the word black and just take a picture of, of solid black background to put some text on. But I think I will start my photo story with this picture and I will just title it Mount Everest. As I'm typing over here on the right, my text appears on the picture. I can see it's very difficult to see in its current position, so I have some very limited options for text arrangement. But if I click a line top, much better. I can see a typo that I will fix. 
And I probably have even better luck if I change the color. So I'm going to use this button here. I can change the size, the color, and the font type. Let's go ahead and go with a bright yellow and see how it looks. Very good. So I'm going to use that as my title slide. Aside from this, I typically don't add a whole lot of titles onto my photo story. So I'm going to go ahead and click the next button because I'm happy with all the titles that I've put on here. And this is where you will spend the most of your time during your photo story projects. It is at this step where I will record my narration for the project. Now as you can see, I'm prompted to type notes here to help my memory as I narrate this picture. So I can put in some notes about what I want to speak about on this slide. Or if I have a handwritten script, I can simply read from that. No one will see these notes except for me, so whether or not you use this feature is up to you. When you're ready to record, you simply click the record button and begin your narration. So I might say something like, Mount Everest is located on the border between Nepal and China, and at 8,848 meters, or 29,000 feet, it is the highest mountain in the world. When I'm finished, I click the stop button. And now I'm able to preview my narration to see how it sounds. I just clicked that red X to stop my preview. If I'm happy with my narration, I can go on to the next slide and record my narration for this one. If, however, I did not like um, the way it sounded, I can simply hit this button here, the delete narration. It's going to prompt me to make sure I'm positive I want to do this. And now, again, I've been erased out and I can re-record this section simply by clicking the record button and when I'm finished, clicking stop. Probably the easiest way to narrate is to go picture by picture. So you would record the narration that goes with this picture. Then you will click the next picture in the timeline below. And you will click the record button and record your narration that goes with this picture right here. You can, however, record several slides at one time. So if I wanted to focus on these three items down here, let's do a few that actually fit together a little bit better. Let's say I wanted to talk about Sir Edmund Hillary and record um, how he also climbed with Kenzing Norgay and talk a little bit about their summit. So these three pictures down here in the timeline, I want to record together. Notice I don't have to go in order. I don't have to go back to the beginning here and fill in these ones I haven't recorded. I'm just going to record my, my narration here for Edmund Hillary. Now what's important to remember is whatever you see in the larger preview box is where your, word, your words will be attached to. So as I click record, I could be talking about Sir Edmund Hillary, and then I simply just need to take a quick pause or breath, click the next picture, and I can continue now talking about the two of them. I still have not clicked the stop button, so my narration is continuing to roll, and you just need to take a short pause as you click the next slide, and then you can resume your narration. So you, in this way, you can record several slides at once. When I click the stop button, I can see down below in the timeline that my narration has been split into three different parts. Now I can go and preview each of these parts individually if I preview the middle part by clicking the preview button. And, I can continue now and if I decide that I don't like the middle narration but I did a really good job at the beginning and the end of that segment, I can just delete the middle segment and my narration on the beginning and the end is still kept there even though I recorded these all at one step. So you really have some nice features for how you narrate your photos. It's very, very user friendly. Spend a lot of time on this step. This tends to be where the bulk of your grade will come from, is the quality of your narration. And as you go along and are narrating your slides, it's also a very good idea to save your project. You'll notice when I save my project, it is saving as a Windows Photo Story 3 project, or WP3. That is important to note. This is an edited, an editing version of this. This is a version I can reopen and continue editing as often as I like. This is not the version I will turn into my teacher. My teacher does not want all my editing tools and everything to look like this. My teacher needs the, the nice polished movie version that I will publish. So make sure you watch the end of the video. It's a very easy conversion, but you need to make sure you do it properly. Before you leave to the next step, a lot of times I will customize the motion. Now photo story, We'll pan around. I'm going to go back to the beginning picture and preview the animation. So Photo Story kind of pans around from picture to picture. So on this first one, it's not panning. On the next one, it is zooming in, which is a nice visual. And on this one, it's zooming from left to right. Now, if at any time you did not like how Photo Story is panning around your pictures, you can customize the motion. So for instance, on this first slide, there was no motion. So I'm going to specify the start and end of my motion. 
and I'm going to zoom in on the title and then zoom out to full screen mode. You can also adjust the transition between slides. However, um, currently PhotoStory defaults to a nice fade between pictures, which is probably the most preferable transition. But you can see there are several other transitions down below that you can use. If you are telling a bit of a story, there's a page turn left and right that's kind of a nice effect. I just like to pick a transition and keep it consistent. So now if I preview the motion that I have programmed in, you will see that we start zoomed in on the title and we zoom out to see the entire mountain. I like that. I can close that box, click save, close this one and proceed to the next picture where I can customize this motion as well. So right now we're starting out and zooming in but maybe I want to zoom in a little bit more. I will specify beginning motion and end motion and I will just kind of adjust how this go, how it zooms in and out. Sometimes also you will notice that you were speaking for a certain amount of time on a slide and then it just stayed up there for an extended period of time and you want to reduce that. So you'll also notice down here is the duration setting. You, the setting duration automatically, um, PhotoStory can do, or you might say, you know what, you're leaving that picture up there a little bit too long. Let's go ahead and reduce the time that that picture is up there to be um, closer to six or seven seconds. Now PhotoStory will never let you go fewer seconds than how long your narration is. So it will not let you erase your narration. But if my narration is only four seconds, it doesn't make sense to leave this picture up there for nine seconds. So I can reduce the amount of time, click save, close and progress. So in this way you can see on this step, you'll be narrating, you can customize your motion, you can adjust your transitions and you can adjust the amount of time that the picture is displaying or you can simply go with the defaults that PhotoStory has programmed in here for you. When you're all done with that step, you're almost finished with your video, proceed to the next step which is selecting music. Now if you select music, that means that you own an MP3 that you would like to use as background music. The copyright rule or copyright guideline on using music is to keep it to about 30 seconds per song. So you can even use a couple different songs if you would like to. Wherever your, whatever slide is highlighted in the timeline is where the song will begin. So if I wanted the song to begin on the second slide, I will highlight that slide, click select music, I will choose one of the songs that I have and click open. Now if you can see the song starts where my slide was selected and plays to the end of the photo story or until I pick a new song. My photo story is less than 30 seconds, I really don't need to worry about changing my songs. If I want to change my song though just for fun, I can highlight the slide where I want a new song to begin click select music and choose a different song. Now this is a pretty short song so it will stop when the song ends which is prior to the end of the photo story. Now I can also, I'm going to delete the song simply by highlighting where it begins and clicking the delete music button here. So what I will typically do instead of using my own music so that I don't have to worry about copyright. I will just let PhotoStory create music for me. So this is a great feature. I can click the create music feature. I can pick a genre. Classical is an excellent choice for background music. I can choose an instrument. I can choose a mood. I can preview it. I can adjust the tempo and I can adjust the intensity and I can click OK if I'm happy with that. You can see the song will now play all the way through. The nice thing about having photo stories create your music for you is it will automatically create a nice little ending so it doesn't sound like the song got cut off. It takes care of everything for you so you don't have to worry about how well the music's going to match up with the beginning and the end. The one thing I will recommend you do though is to make sure you preview the music and your narration. If I preview this slide It's hard to hear my voice because the music is a little too loud. So I will turn down the volume of the music, continue previewing and adjusting volume until I can hear my voice very clearly and the music is just a background accompaniment. All right, that is pretty much the end of my photo story. The last step is the most important step in terms of making sure that you turn in the right format for your teacher. You don't want all your hard work up to this point to be for naught. So I'm going to click next. And this is the point where I need to convert my photo story into a movie. Now if I'm not finished with it, I don't need to do this step next. I can just save my project and continue editing it when I am ready. 
when I'm completely done, when I'm ready to publish it, when I'm ready to essentially print it and hand it in, I need to save it for playback on someone else's computer who may or may not have photo story. I need it to play as a movie, a movie I could upload to YouTube, a movie I can email to my teacher if it's not too large, a nice movie version that I can play in class. So you'll select this first choice. Next is where do you want your movie to save? So browse. At this point, it's going to continue saving it as the same name as before. I really encourage you to put your name in there in this version and put the word video so that you know which version to turn in, not the editing version, the version that says video in it. This is where Photo Story can get confusing to some because you click save and you think that, that, that you're done, that it did it, but it really didn't save anything. All it saved was the location of where to put your story. It did not actually convert your story. So make sure you take the one more step, the last next, this is the process by which Photo Story is converting all of my music, my narration, and my pictures into a wonderful movie that I can turn in to my teacher and play for my class that will not be cluttered up with the editing tools and that plays full screen. This process takes a while, so you will know it's working because it doesn't happen instantly, and you will also get a congratulation message at the end. When my project has finished converting into a movie file, I'm given a congratulation message and I'm asked what I would like to do next. I do want to go ahead and view my story just to make sure everything looks good. This then, this title, file name, is the one that you will turn into your teacher. I have another video on the website that shows how you can submit this to your teacher via Google Docs if your teacher has asked you to submit it that way or you can copy this file onto a flash drive so that you can quickly plug it into your teacher's computer and show it to the whole class. If you have any questions about how to use PhotoStory, if you have any problems with it, please come see me in the library. We do check out the computer headsets with a microphone, so if you do not have a computer microphone at home, please stop by and pick one of those up. It will make the narration quality much better um, than if you're just using an internal mic on your computer, unless you are certain that your computer's internal mic has good quality.